Welcome back to Science Sundays. This week we're learning about DNA by extracting it out of a strawberry. Yes, it is something you can actually see and hold in your hands. Check it out. All right, we are going to be learning today about strawberry DNA, and it's a fun exploration using materials from home. I added this bit.ly on here so teachers can access this uh, slideshow if you're interested in uh, using it. And uh, it gives you some great uh, science backgrounds, procedures and materials uh, that you'll need from home. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you have rubbing alcohol and I put it in the freezer night before I'm gonna do the experiment. And it doesn't matter whether you use 70% or 91% alcohol. I have a measuring cup and a teaspoon. So I have one fourth and one teaspoon. A dish soap, it can be any type of liquid soap, um, basic salt, uh, two cups. So normally in the classroom, we would use beakers. We're gonna use cups this time. And then Ziploc bags. So you can either use a snack size or sandwich size bag. And then we're going to need some water. Uh, popsicle sticks, chopsticks, or tweezers are fine. And then we are going to need about two to four, you know, regular size strawberries. And then a medicine cup. So this is a great tool to use at home if you don't have beakers and your measuring cup is too big, you can use a medicine cup to measure volume of liquids. And then you're going to need uh, paper towels, napkin, you can use a coffee filter. And so you'll need one of those too. So I'm going to show you how to do the experiment. So first we're going to um, get our water and I used clear cups for the experiment. And so this is a hundred milliliters of water. Normally in your measuring cup, you're going to have your volume measurements on the side. So I'm gonna pour that into my cup and then I'm going to take two teaspoons of dish soap, pour that into that cup. All right. Then I'm going to need one, one fourth teaspoon of salt. So once I get that in there, I want to make sure I stir it so that the salt dissolves. So you want to make sure it's nice and stirred up. All right, so this is called the extraction mixture. So we're gonna put this one aside and now we're going to look at our strawberries. So I have my Ziploc bag and I'm going to put, these are about medium sized strawberries. I'm gonna put about three medium sized strawberries in my bag. Then I'm going to take from that extraction mixture we made, I'm gonna take two teaspoons of liquid from there. And then I'm gonna seal it up. But when I seal it up, I wanna make sure all the air is out. And then make sure you use, uh, make sure it's nice and sealed because now we're going to do some uh, smashing. So we have to mush up the strawberries and make sure that there's no large pieces. And this is a great exploration into going over cells with students so they can uh, check out cells under the microscope and then start to learn about DNA where it's located in the cells as well. So once we have that all mashed up and there's no large pieces left, I'm gonna take another cup and now I'm going to need that paper towel, napkin, or coffee filter. So since this, one, this paper towel is big, I'm going to just fold it in half and just put it in the top. Now, this part can be tricky if your napkin or your paper towel falls in the cup. So we want to make sure it doesn't do that. And then we want to put all of that strawberry mushed pulp and everything 
right in there. Then we're going to take it and we're going to squeeze, but gently squeeze, don't squeeze it enough so that the paper towel breaks and you know rips open. We don't want that. And we're just gonna pour it into that cup. So once that's done, now we have strawberry pulp. So we can kind of see there's some bubbles in there and some strawberry pulp. Now, if you want more pulp, you would definitely do more strawberries. Okay, so we are going to take our medicine cup and our cold rubbing alcohol. And you're gonna put about five milliliters a little too much. And then when you pour it into the cup, you want to make sure that the cup is at an angle. So you pour it in and you don't want to mix it around. So what you're going to start to see is you're going to start to see the DNA floating at the top. So to see this better, I luckily as a science teacher have a test tube at home and you can see the DNA as it starts to gather at the top. So you can take your tweezers or your popsicle stick and then you can actually pull out the DNA out the top of the, the liquid. And then you can take this and put it on a Petri dish. You can put it into a slide and look at it in a microscope. So this is a great lab to get started with going over cells. So with our experiments, we need to, after students look at this experiment, they need to start to understand the science behind it. And we don't wanna give it to them ahead of time. We wanna make sure that they get their exploration and then they go into details. So here's a video to help you uh, with that experiment. If you can't, the students can't do it for home or they don't have access, so you can have a video. And then, so now we wanna look at the science behind the experiment. And in the science standards, the new science standards for, uh, they're called NGSS, they're next generation science standards. You can use, the middle school standard, constructed investigation to provide evidence that living things are made out of cells. Well, we just did that. We provided, you know, evidence. This is evidence that we can use uh, to explain that investigation. And in high school, they're constructing an explanation based on evidence for how structure of DNA determines the structure of proteins. So this is a great exploration tool to go into um, that structure and then break it down as you go through the lesson. So with the science, we're looking at DNA. This using strawberries is a great um, introductory tool because strawberries have a lot more DNA than other fruits. So normally humans only have two pairs of chromosomes where strawberry has eight. So you can definitely see a lot more um, the DNA in the fruit. And so the reason why we created our extract mixture is the uh, soap in there breaks down the cell membrane. And you can see in the picture with the cell membrane, we need to dissolve that cell membrane so that we can get that DNA that's in the nucleus. So we want to extract that. So that soap breaks it down and then we're able to extract that DNA. Um, when you get into high school science, you can talk about hydrophobic and hydrophilic materials as far as inside and outside the membrane. So that's more and going into um, this experiment a little more advanced. Um, junior high is not going to understand that piece. So why salt and rubbing alcohol? Salt releases the DNA strands by breaking the protein change that hold the nucleic acids together. So again, this is a little more advanced for junior high, but you can definitely go into high school and break down uh, those protein chains and um, what is going on in this picture as far as the detergent pulling away those pieces and then leaving that DNA by itself. 
So when you add the rubbing alcohol, and we can kind of see in our test tube, we can see that the DNA splits from the rest of the pulp. And so that rubbing alcohol is put in there so that we can get that separation because the DNA doesn't dissolve in the actual um, solution. So there are extensions from this experiment. Um, you can try bananas. Bananas is a great one to use if you don't have strawberries or they're not in season, you can definitely use bananas. And then um, you can move into using different types of uh, species of fruit as well, different types of species of strawberries, size, um, maybe even uh, talking about my strawberries were um, several days old, they were already starting to bruise versus a really fresh strawberry. So you can look at those too. Um, we can look at different temperatures of the alcohol instead of it being super cold. Uh, maybe it's warm. Is it going to produce more uh, DNA or not? So there's a lot of different things that you can do from this experiment. And it's a great, again, exploration to show students about cells. Um, that's it. So thank you so much.